see 609 people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Without wasting much time, I would like to invite Dr. Hashim, uh, our Hashim sir, uh, to give us a brief introduction about Dr. Lodish. Dear students and teachers, today is one of the most important day in our lives because we have a legend with us, Dr. Harvey Lodish, to deliver a lecture. I am certain that this is a dream come true moment for all of us. We have been studying different aspects of cell and molecular biology over the years and now we have the author of the book with us. I am extremely happy that I could organize this event today with the ensured participation of my students since the year 2001. Even though every one of you is well aware about Professor Lodish, before moving on to the talk, I would like to give a brief introduction about him. Dr. Lodish received his AB degree, Summa Cum Laude, and with the highest honors in chemistry and mathematics from Kenyan College in 1962. He did his PhD degree in genetics with Dr. Norton Cinder from the Rockefeller University in 1966, and postdoctoral research with Dr. Sidney Brenner and Dr. Francis Crick at MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. And he joined the faculty of MIT Department of Biology. He was promoted to professor in 1976. And in 1983, he was appointed as founding member of the new Whitehead Institute of Biomedical Research. In 1999, he also became professor in the new MIT Department of Biological Engineering. He has mentored over 200 PhD students and postdoctoral fellows. His excellent mentorship resulted in two Nobel laureates and eight of his students elected to the U.S. National Academy of Science and the National Academy of Medicine. Okay, now let's briefly get into his research life. Initially, his work focused on translational control of protein synthesis and on development of the cellular slime mold. In 1973, his laboratory concentrated on several important secreted and plasma membrane glycoproteins. In collaboration with David Baltimore, he defined the well-known ER Golgi plasma membrane pathway for biogenesis of cell surface protein. In the 80s, his research group was the first to clone and sequence mRNA encoding GLUT1, 2, and 4. They also cloned and characterized Band 3, an anion exchange protein in RBC, SCLO glycoprotein receptor subunits, sucrase isomaltase, the erythropoietin receptor, and two of the subunits of TGF-beta receptor. I have no doubt that each one of you now has worthy memories about these topics being discussed in our class extensively. And he is the person responsible for all these findings. And yes, we have the master with us today. He has received several prestigious awards, including the Metcalf Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Society for Experimental Hematology in 2020 and the Wallace H. Calder Award for Lifetime Achievement in Hematology from the American Society of Hematology in 2021. He's also a member of editorial board of many renowned channels. So now, with immense pleasure and honor, I'd like to invite Professor Lodish to enlighten us with his talk. Thank you. So what I'm going to talk about today is another aspect of my scientific endeavors, which is starting and building companies to treat unmet medical needs. I have been in the biotech industry as a founder of many companies for over 40 years. I teach at MIT two courses in biotechnology, one for undergraduates, a paper reading course, a seminar course. But I also teach a graduate level course called the Science and Business of Biotechnology that um, I teach with a professor of finance and we do this in the business school. That course is now an online edX course and has enrolled, actually that number is out of date. We've enrolled 24,000 students from all over the world. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Harvey. It was really an inspiring talk. Ask me whatever you like. You're a good audience. A rare disease is a rare disease. So when you talk about the business, so you may not get a uh, uh, good ma market value when you when you when you are uh, finding a drug and you are uh, you are getting into the market. So then the because it's a rare disease, uh, you may not expect that much profit. These drugs are coming uh, going through a clinical trial and, and all. So it is very too much cost. What is your thought? Like, how do you balance the business and that humanity? It's not just developing countries. In the European Union, the health systems are regulated by the government. It's a complicated problem that also involves government health policy. And it involves politics and everything else. Be prepared to lobby. I'm not joking. Be prepared, because we do this all the time. We routinely go to Washington and meet with those of the parties we support and the ones that we don't to convince them of the importance of this kind of, uh, of work. They understand personal stories. You know, explaining that you have a relative that is suffering from some disease and there's a gene therapy that we'd like to try. It involves a fair amount of interaction with these people who set the policy. Very important point. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much, Dr. Harvey. It was really an inspiring talk.